Hello friends, family and other creatures of the sea and welcome back to another interesting level game of StarCraft 2. We have a best of three from the Korean StarCraft League and today we have a player that we all know and love. It's of course Dark here in the top right playing for Talon Esports. In the bottom left a player that I had heard about but never really seen play. I'd seen him in brackets before, usually going 0-2 in the first round. This is going to be Rebellion. Now. Uh, I got this series recommended to me, and I I didn't know anything about Rebellion, so I did some did some Googling, did some figuring out to, to check what's up with this guy. Rebellion is a Protoss player from the Korean server. He is Korean that is relatively low in Aligulak rating, has 1600 in an Aligulak rating that is not entirely great. His MMR on the ladder um, as of today is 5200 MMR, while Dark's MMR is, I believe, somewhere like 6.7, so 6700. Um, both players are Grandmaster, but that's because the ranges of MMR in Grandmaster League are so big and that, that league is so wide. This is basically the... A, a good comparison would be low Grandmaster to Diamond 2. That is about the, the, the difference here in MMR between these two players. Despite all of that, this best of three from the Korean StarCraft League got recommended to me because apparently Rebellion has a an interesting style. A he's he's a different cookie from the other guys. All right, he he's just he tastes different, he, he looks different, and he definitely hits different with a bunch of his builds. So far, fairly standard. Went for a block on his opponent's natural, and is now just roaming around with some minerals in his mouth, trying to go for a little bit of pro harass. Um, should probably start up this first adept. It's really late with the first adept, so that is definitely a, a decently sized difference. Gonna hit six seconds later than you should on average um, with the first adept. I'm not entirely sure what that is good for. Perhaps just a little bit of a supply block there or a forgotten cybernetics for. Either way, Dark is sending the first two links across the map. He's gonna pick up this watchtower and see what he can do with those links. Links do get spotted here by this probe moving back. Let's see if this adept is gonna go hunting for links or just go straight across. I think he's just gonna go straight across, which does surprise me, being aware of the fact that there are two links on the map. In my mind, oh my god. Oh, that actually is gonna clear them, yeah. Okay, went back home to clear these two uh, these two links. Links are gonna get the scout though on the Stargate. I do believe they will, as uh, yeah, Rebellion didn't hide it all too well. So that's gonna be a uh, peace of mind here for Dark, saying, "All right, I know what this dude is up to. I don't have to worry very much at this point. I'm just gonna sit back, relax, and uh, hang out, basically." All right, what do we have up next over here? Overlord on the high ground. Uh, Oracle could pop over there to try and clear that Overlord, of course. So we have the Adept now starting to move out back on the map. No third gateway unit, which is an interesting call. This is what we'd consider relatively risky due to the fact of the third base easily being cancelled. I, I would not feel very comfortable taking a third base uh, in, in this current position that Rebellion is doing. But, you know, Rebellion wouldn't be Rebellion if he doesn't take some risk. Gonna take a fast third. We'll need to use this Oracle defensively as a result. And probably wants to add a pylon in here as well. Or at least that's once again what I would imagine. Twilight Council goes down for minutes and two seconds. And we're off to a uh, really a racing start here in my mind. Roach Warren. Double spores. Second gas. Okay. Third gas. So 40 people that are riding uh, along at home. This smells to me like a massive Queen Roach push because this is an early uh, early amount of gases being taken off of a low drone count. I am very surprised with that extra Overlord as well. This has to be a Roach Walk. At the same time, we're seeing a 5-gate um, Glaive Adept all-in out of Rebellion. So this is going to be an all-in into an all-in. And usually the player that hits first is going to lose. But in the case of Roaches versus Glaive Adapts, usually the Roaches just win because they're a little bit stronger. But we're going to have to wait and see. First of all, is Rebellion going to be capable of getting this information? He does throw... Look at that. That Revelation on here. And on the edge of the Revelation, you can see that a second gas is mining. That should be suspicious. And if you're Rebellion here, you probably want to get... A little bit more scouting in. Maybe you want to see what's popping from these larvae and then get a couple of extra batteries. Batteries are, are the tool of the protos to deal with this. Instead he's gonna go in here, sees the complete lack of queens and says, <laughs> Dark is an idiot. Look at him not having his queens in position. What a moron. 
And now he's starting to think, like, wait a second. This guy is 1600 MMR better than I am. Surely something is wrong. And indeed it is. As, uh, ooh, what? Super battery gets activated here. That seems, uh, it seems a bit premature to me. Because it's gonna run out before the fight starts. Uh, glaives aren't quite done yet. Resonating Glaives. So these adapts are gonna be much weaker than they should be. Um, oracles need to be utilized. Will get used right now, but aren't actually fighting. As we're gonna get a uh, big adept warp in Resonating Glaives finishing up in a couple of seconds. This battery completely pointless here in the back. With hardly any energy. Uh, super battery is halfway through its cooldown, but there is no second battery, and there's no way that this initial battery is going to survive against this particular Ravager count. Stasis Ward on the left is helping out. The splits are reasonably good. There's a lot of cash in the bank, though, here for Rebellion, who, honestly, if he had a second and a third battery, or just a super battery available, would probably be doing a pretty decent job here. The amount of adapts that he had was kind of crazy. He could have probably stalled until Resonating Glaze was done with a super battery, and if he would have been capable of spending any amount of money, this could have potentially been a hold. But now, it feels like Dark is just walking all over him. Kind of how you'd expect a, um, <laughs> a game between two players who are uh, this differently skilled to go. And uh, yeah, GG gets called. Dark wins game number one. And that's pretty much how we would expect a game between these guys to go. With Rebellion with some cute thoughts. Um, even having a build order that seemed, honestly, kind of okay. Uh, but in the end, not being strong enough in my mind at least to uh to really finish it up to you know to bring this to a solid ending uh, whatsoever it uh, didn't look good in the end there and I, I think there were opportunities for sure scouting wise um response wise not using the super battery instantly wise like there's a there's a lot of things he could have done better but either way second game here on side delta as we're going to be moving into an 80 nexus as our opener Ah, Rebellion, sure. He he knows how to please the masses, all right? He has, this guy has builds for days. 18 next is a while that I've seen it. Can go into a, a solid double gate follow-up, couple of adept corona boost. It's one of these builds that cheesers often play because it allows for a lot of powerful gateway timings instead, um, which is something you don't really see so much um, in the... He's not getting a gas... Oh, he's getting a forge. Sorry. I, I was looking at the production tab. He's getting a forge here. This is going to be an extremely late cannon rush. 135, the first piling goes down. That means that the first cannon is going to go down 18 seconds after that. And I wish I could do math on the spot, but 153? That is, that is going to be very late because the, the hatchery finishes two minutes in. Uh, this is... I think you can just counter this by building spines. Spines, Queens, and Links, but I could be wrong. Let's see how Dark is going to try to approach this. For now, with a drone pool, which absolutely fails, by the way. Just a complete failure here on Dark's part. Second cannon coming down as well. Now, this is all in range of a high ground. This pylon is relatively low. But the goal here for Rebellion is not to climb up to the high ground and contain his opponent. No, the goal here is to just kill this hatchery and maybe force out a bit of an over-eager response. Gateway, fairly late. But that's going to be okay because we have these cannons shooting this hatchery. 23 workers to 19. Single gas is now being taken as well. This was all done of, a, of just, yeah, of just zero gases. This is such a wild little build. I hate this cannon positioning, by the way. Absolutely, uh, it, it's appalling to me. It really is. I still believe that spine crawlers would have been capable of dealing with this, as well as just 10, 12, 13, 14 links or so. Um, of course, that does mean you're going to have a low worker count. As these two links are trying to squeeze by, that's not quite going to work. And Rebellion, with honestly kind of a cool opener. I, I do like this. I At least I don't mind it. This wasn't the greatest cannon rush I've ever seen, but it's a cannon rush that so far is functioning. He's up about 10 workers, he's up an entire base. Dark loses a roach there. Nice control. Now, sarcastic, that wasn't nice control at all. These are static freaking uh, buildings. They should not be getting any kills here, especially not kills with that have so much, units that have so much HP. Now this Ravager is going to shoot from a distance. I'm just going to take out this uh, pylon. I really wonder what the plan is going to be for Dark, because he's in an awful spot. He's down 10 workers. Uh, we have a second cannon coming in right now. Double Stalkers being chronoed, which I think is the correct call. Because what really is there here for Dark to do 
but go across the map and try to win. I don't think there is a whole lot. I really don't think there's a whole lot. So I'm, I'm kind of a fan here of the double stalkers. Gonna shoot this overlord. Don't think he's quite gonna get it down. Battery in the back as well is definitely helping. No worker production whatsoever, which is just a mistake. This is not a good call. You want to be producing works the entire way through, 100%. As well as maybe even getting a third gas. I think that would actually be quite powerful. Because uh, there's plenty of money in the bank here. Like, money is not the issue. Production is really the issue. It's going to take out this uh, little unbuildable rocks to perhaps build another structure there. Maybe one more battery. Needs to be careful not to get too over eager though. Because it's easy to give a lead away by over-defending after you've dealt some damage. Triple uh, Ravagers now moving across the map are going to double-hit these gateways. Salad moves down. Speed is on the way, but it's not done whatsoever here. We still don't have any follow-up tech on the way. This could be... Well, it's a little late for a Stargate, as well as with pure Stalkers. Usually a Stargate is not quite what you're looking for. These Biles do manage to hit. As Rebellion now, in a, in a pretty sick spot. Up 13 workers. Starts plus one attack. Which is... A move, I guess? I, I don't like it. Uh, in, in particular because it feels like the the main lacking resource here for Rebellion is going to be gas. And tech is going to be very important in holding a third base or putting on some aggression on the opponent. And I think plus one does very little for you in the next minute, minute and a half or so. Well, any other type of tech I think could provide you with a lot more benefits. Now we do have a Twilight Council and Robo coming up behind it right now. I actually still wouldn't have minded seeing a Stargate with Oracles. Look at the Queen count being very, very low. Stargate units give a certain amount of just control, as well as the Oracles have good defensive powers as well, of course, against high Ling numbers, against Ravagers. We have four Overlords popping out, as uh, Dark seems to be gearing up for another one of these uh, Roche Ravager attacks. Just like in the last game, I mean, it worked well enough there. Double robotics facilities coming down right now. Once again, not a huge fan of that. Double adept trying to shade in, gathering information. See a couple of roaches there. Wants to get confirmation on the third base and on the drone count, in particular on that third base. Would love to see a shade in towards the natural for some more scouting information, but to me it seems like this adept might just end up dying. Roach speed hasn't finished. Hell, is there even a, a lair? No, there isn't. So I don't think Roach Pete's going to finish anytime soon here. Plus one does finish up. Do we have a battery? We have a battery and we have a cannon as well. Uh, Rebellion is, uh, is taking no risks here. Absolutely zero risk on this. Blind battery plus cannon. I guess not entirely blind. He saw the lack of workers on the third. So now we're going to go back in here with that adapt to once again confirm the lack of workers on that third. Has five gateways. That's good production. His army, however, is quite small. Only needs to care about defending one base. It's natural, completely secure. With the two cannons, two batteries, no way that Dark is going to go in there. All right, here we go with an attack once more. Instantly sends the battery again. What a, a blunder here by Rebellion. Just hitting that panic button. It is instantly instantly hitting that panic button double batteries being thrown down here doesn't quite have blink yet that's gonna make this defense a little bit harder cannon helping out bile's gonna connect with the cannon that means that the cannon is now gone plus one salads will rip through those zerglings but without the healing of a battery it's not actually gonna be that powerful two batteries have to be cancelled here as well blink now finishing up as uh, these zealots in this little choke actually dealing so so much damage against these links that was huge blink has now finished up as well as uh, probes are being pulled but I do believe that Rebellion is just going to be in a bit of trouble. Six gateway production. Uh, we have more links coming in. It seems to me like Dark is, is trying to regroup a little bit further back. With probes now going back to work. I'd love to see a new battery. As well as an extra pylon here that could power that battery. I don't think this pylon is actually powering the battery. But still, it is what it is. And now we have plus two on the way. Or actually, it's almost done already. I'd love to see charge here. We have six gateways out. I think Rebellion once again is in a good spot. He's up 10 workers, even in bases. Significantly better upgrades and honestly also just better units. Like if you're fighting freaking non-speed roaches with stalkers and blink, life's going to be pretty freaking nice to me. Okay, cannon being built right next to the battery. That's actually going to ruin his mining quite a bit. Look how far these probes need to travel. The play isn't all that tight here out of Rebellion, but the build orders... Honestly, not bad. I'm, I'm kind of impressed by what he's been cooking up. I'm not minding it here whatsoever. I'm not minding it at all. 
There's uh, five investors on the way out. Investors plus ravagers can be a nasty combination. The bile fungal. Of course, fungal to slow them down. Bile to kill those units can be rough to deal with. Evo chambers now on the way. We have three more stalkers being warped in. Four more stalkers being warped in. We're on six gateways still. Seventh gateway has now finished up. This is very all in out of rebellion. But the all in or the defense out of, out of dark is also fairly all in. I mean, he doesn't have any upgrades. Ooh, 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 ooh. Rebellion skipping breakfast just to eat a massive fungal. I hate to see it. Uh, it's gonna still dodge those biles and <laughs> another huge fungal here. Uh, Bile's now somewhat connecting with this army. Good start for Dark. He's gonna need a couple more of those fungals. There's three more remaining, I believe. This wants to can connect. <laughs> Rebellion is hungry for the green stuff. Holy cow. Uh, <laughs> taking some big hits here. Upgrades now start for Dark. Another fungal hit. Just completely on top of these stalkers. But the stalkers with plus two upgrades are just so powerful that it almost doesn't matter. This looks so silly. Because this was some very poor control out of Rebellion. Um, just literally getting fully hit in the face by every single fungal. But he's still just kiting back. He's still having a good time. He's now going to try and fight these queens. This uh, 122 supply against 135. The plus two upgrades are so big. The complete lack of speed on these roaches is probably even bigger. Because it means these roaches can never really connect with these stalkers. Not on a deep, uh, you know, intimate, spiritual level where they shoot acid at them. Not, not, not like that whatsoever. This hatchery is fairly low. WW as Rebellion takes the win. <laughs> if this was a ladder game, I think it would be like 85 MMR that you're losing or something. <laughs> I wonder if this is the best win Rebellion has ever had. Oh, that was such a sick game. I love that build as well. Such a cool early game. Yeah, so we'll be heading into game number three. And just like that, we bang into our third game on Oceanborn, which if there's going to be a map good for cannon rushing, it legit is this map. But doesn't seem to be the case. This probe scout is just a little bit too early. And uh, instead just going to go for a hatchery block. Cheeky little hatchery block. Could still be a fort. It'd be so uncommon though. Gateway gets thrown down instead. Yeah. It's not going to be the case here. Not going to be the case here. It's this... Uh, ooh. Drone's going on a journey. So we're probably going to be seeing a... Actually, God knows what we're going to be seeing here. Look how much money he's floating. 18 drones? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> he's going to get a 90, na <laughs> 90 natural <laughs> while floating 80 minerals. This is to be the worst opener in the world. He's going to still go for the second hatch as a proxy hatch. I mean, that is insane. That is actually insane. I can't believe what I'm watching. Uh, so this, na I mean, this probe is, is going to try to block, I guess. Uh, Ooh, doesn't quite get the block. If he would have gotten that, it would have been great. I need to throw down a cyber core, get a zealot out most likely. Um, really needs to get a cyber core. Hello. Cyber core is of the essence here. Speed on the cyber core is of the essence. Oh, this is a solid 13 seconds delayed. 124 is when it should be going down, went down at 137. Rookie moves. I think in the responses, rebellion is not very good. But when it comes to just executing a build, he, he definitely knows what he wants. You know, he's he, he's one of those guys that just practices against the AI, I think. He's just been, you know, he's, he's, he's been in the lab with a pen and a pad. And he's he's been, he's been, he's been writing stuff out. He's been figuring it all out. Six worker pool here on this hatchery. Uh, decent mining still in the main. Evo chamber now as well. I hate to see that stuff. I can actually just build a nexus next to it. <laughs> can just pull away. It's like... <laughs> that was a nice attempt there of a block, but <laughs> wait a second, that doesn't actually block. It's now going to start with a stalker. Okay, that's also not extremely common here. As I think this is a bad start for Rebellion for two reasons. Reason number one is that I think it delayed him more than it delayed Dark. And reason number two, the game now is weird. So your planned out build order is going to be harder to execute. I think in Chaos, better players often thrive because they're they know more scenarios they more they know more situations know how to macro back into it basically so i i do believe i favor dark just a, a tiny tad here twilight council being thrown down is a wild move um i guess could be for glaives it's also being thrown down while the drone is still alive which makes this move even wilder some workers it's long distance mining while not being fully saturated there's just a lot of 
kind of objective mistakes. Like, is it, these are not choices, you know? Well, it is a choice, but it's a, it's a wrong choice. You, like, long-distance mining, while you're not even saturated to 16 in your main, is just bad. Like, there's no... You know, there's no... There's nothing else there. It's not like he has some insider information. No. Well, he might have insider information, but then that information is wrong. Like, completely wrong. He's gonna get a robotics facility here as well. And charge, so... I mean, it seems like we're heading into charge lot all-in territory, except we're still mining gas, so that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Usually with charge lot all-ins, what you want to be doing is you want to pull out of gas so you can maximize your mineral income. And you can do it on very low worker count with high gateway count. Because if you're just mining pure minerals, 32 workers, all you're going to need. So you can just cut workers at this point, and get like maybe an immortal with it as well, and then go from there. It's going to go up to four gates. Still mining gas, could go for a Templar Archives. You sometimes see that, like a charge drop into an Archon drop. It's not super common, but that doesn't mean that it's bad. Although I do believe it's bad. Okay, a couple of Zealots here being warped in. Can the Lynx actually scout this? He hasn't seen the Twilight Council quite yet. Do we have any spores? We have zero spores. We have three gases going down. Lair as well, starting at this point. As the Prism comes out, we have a Dark Shrine. This is... A late timing for a Dark Shrine. Twilight and Robotics Facility are going to get scouted. We see four roaches instantly starting in production. Five roaches, four more links. No extra gases yet on the natural, though. And no third base quite yet, either. It's going to be four gate. Charge lock. Into DT. Spine coming in here for Dark. Or zealots being working. I mean, this is this is not gonna hit very hard. This is this is like a toddler. It's a toddler sponge, and I don't think toddler sponge very hard. Doesn't mean it can't hurt. But this, this doesn't have a lot of power. I mean, if you hit in the right spot, you know, you could still hurt a guy. Even a toddler could. But uh, this is not. This shouldn't do anything. It's, it's just not enough zealots. There's no support of air either. And there's a spine here. We have plenty of roaches around. It's gonna try and probably warp in towards the main base with some DTs is what I'd expect. Like four DTs maybe. You don't want to do that right in Overlord Vision, nobody, do you? Yeah, you want to wanna do that here. And there's no spores. We have no Overseer either. Maybe you can snipe the base. You can split these up as well and deal damage, but you could also not split these up and just right-click the base. If you just right-click the base, don't you just win? Well, win, I'm not sure, but... Oh, there's a Spore here. That's actually kind of frustrating. Spore could move over, but then again, these DTs could also move in towards the main base. We have a couple of transfusions available. Spore not being utilized quite yet. Overseer, where art thou? Um, not around. Did we get a recall? Or, yeah, recall. Minus one, minus two, minus three. Minus three DTs for a base. There's no third base at home, though, for Rebellion. So this is going to be two base versus two base for a little bit with relatively equal worker count. Zealot count is high. There is that DT at home. Overseers need to pop in. Arkan now gets morphed as well. Honestly, this is a decently sized defensive force. There are no upgrades. I feel like the follow-up here has been extremely mediocre. Um, yeah, just... No, that, that's just it. It's just been extremely mediocre in my mind. This has been... Not good. Just not good of a follow-up. And Nexus is gonna get cancelled. Uh, second Immortal now on the way. I feel like there's just so much cash uh, always floating around here in, in Rebellion's uh, pockets. He's a rich man, but that's not really what you want to be in StarCraft. You want to be poor while you have a lot of income. And he's doing the opposite. Low income, but saving a lot. And that makes no sense. So he's going to defend this base, but we now have a third base about to be done. A fourth base on the way already. Upgrades coming in. Hydra then as well. So this was a cute attempt, but I don't really see this working. Could perhaps still go for a big move out here with two Immortals, an Arc on a couple of sentries. I think try to go for a bit of a drop here. Now just attempting to secure this third base. But I think the only viable move that is still around is, is just going for a straight up attack. Because the longer this game goes, the worse it's going to get for Rebellion. Rebellion is not a king of the late game. He's not even a king of the mid game. He's the, he's the king of the first seven minutes so far. And these first seven minutes haven't been so good. So let's try to end it while we still have somewhat of a... Of something. I mean, you're just down 20 workers at this point. And we're down in upgrades. And even pushing here seems ridiculous, honestly. 
Don't have a terrible army. Every second that goes by is a bad second. 14 Hydras now in production. As the fort base is about to pop up as well. I even think that Dark could potentially move across the map and try and win the game here. Because he's just in a really, really good spot. Clio Reconstitution also done. Lurker then coming in. No infestation pit yet. So these are going to be lurkers without the range, without the adaptive talents. I mean, this army with just plus one is going to be good enough to really beat anything that we see Rebellion do here. Rebellion stacking into upgrades. Third base. 49 workers. Worker production has just been subpar as well, and he's adding more sentries. So he's definitely setting up for a big power push. I'm guessing with plus one and, and blink, you have pneumatized carapace coming in. But he's going to hit the, the perfect anti-timing here. Basically, the moment Dark maxes out is the timing that Rebellion is going to hit. It's going to be down in army supply, down in upgrades, or even in upgrades. And he might even be fighting some Lurkers, because Lurkers can just be built, even without the range. And even lur Lurkers without range are still pretty powerful against this type of army that is just too small. No storm nearby. And here goes Dark. He wants to take out these rocks, and... Honestly, I wouldn't even mind if he decides to fight off creep a little bit at first. I'd love to see one or two more Ravagers being uh, put into the mix. I think that would be fairly helpful here for him. Not doing it quite yet, though. You have a split of units in towards the natural. Ooh, 2DT's gonna get spotted here by the Overseer. That is unfortunate. That is very unfortunate. DTs want to go back home, but we'll get caught by these links. We have a pushing forward here with the massive army. Good control so far. Mm, force field's not bad either. It's going to get a, a portion of this force. Doesn't really lose anything either. The problem is just that Dark has too much money in the bank. Dark is too rich for this to really matter. These DTs are now going to get cleaned up by the Ling Hydra run by. This forces the hand on Rebellion. Rebellion moves in. And some decent force fields, a fake hallucination, tries to go for it. Has an okay fight, but it's definitely not good enough. There's just too much dark here and too little rebellion. The rebellion gets squashed and the uh, reigning powers remain. As Dark takes this series to the one. Cute, cute builds though. Cute plays though. I actually want to watch him play against maybe some slightly lower level professional players. I feel like rebellion is a guy I'm going to be looking for. In the future, I also saw that he played a crap ton of games in the past season. Uh, like like insane numbers, basically. And also in the current season, he's just been playing a lot. So he's someone, you know, it's kind of the the, fu the future of cheese might be in Rebellion's hands. And uh, if that's the case, it's in pretty decent hands, I think. Hard-working Protoss player. That's what we'd like to see. All right. It's going to be it for me today uh, in this series. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you did enjoy this series. If you did, don't forget to like button, subscribe to the channel. And see you all next time for a new one. Ciao, ciao.